Zoom has released a new modeler in the ultra competitive three to $400 price range, but can it compare to the other modelers in this range? We have the Podgo, the GE250, the Ampero, and the new offering from Nuex, the MG30. So what does the new G6 have to offer among its competitors? The G6 features a full color 4.3 inch LCD touchscreen that allows you to navigate through the menus, edit signal chains, and even use the on-screen keyboard when naming your newly saved patches. You could chain up to nine effects or seven effects plus amp emulation, but I did find some limitations with this, which I will explain here in a minute. It's capable of acting as an audio interface, although you will be limited to a 24 bit depth and a 44.1 kilohertz sample rate with 128 times oversampling. If this sounds just like technical jargon to you, then let me summarize this by saying this is pretty much the bare minimum that would be considered professional in the recording industry. And that connection is made possible from a micro USB 2.0 jack. The unit also features several in and out options, including a mono effects loop, left and right quarter inch outputs, the left also serving double duty as your headphone output, and an auxiliary in mini stereo input for playing along to MP3s on your old Zoom MP3 player or whatever it is people plug into these things. And then we come to a couple uncommon things that you won't see on other floorboards. There is a remote connection used to connect a Bluetooth dongle that will enable you to connect and control your G6 from the Guitar Lab app in your phone, which I have to admit is pretty cool, but I don't have the dongle required to test it out, so we're just gonna have to take their word for it. You also have an SD card slot, and I can't think of any time I have ever seen an SD card slot on a modeler before. And there's a really interesting use for this. Zoom claims on its website that the G6 has Infinite looping. Which is a weird claim because directly underneath it says that it can create multiple loops up to two hours each, which is pretty incredible, but as you keep reading you realize that is only possible with an SD card. All right, so I can see the angle there. Leave optional expandable memory for your looper, for your user presets, and your IRs. Those who want it can purchase an SD card and those who don't, no big deal. Oh wait, you only get 45 seconds of looper action without one. Even so, that's okay because you know what? I never really use the looper anyways. There's still one reason you're gonna need an SD card. Updates. Yes, the updates are done through the SD card slot, similar to the way you would update a camera, which is weird. Now, I was very impressed with the Zoom G6's amp modeling and effects when I first played through it. Everything sounds really, really good. And I think that is the main thing that it has going for it. There is a plethora of different effects and even a sizable amount of amps that are included in the G6. Everything from your standard noise reduction to the more sophisticated poly effects are included and they all sound excellent. Let's talk about the UI and the design, and this is where I start to shy away from the Zoom G6. 
Don't get me wrong, if you're going to make a modeler in a plastic chassis, then making it look like carbon fiber is probably a good idea. But these backlit plastic cut inserts or whatever you would call them for each pedal just kind of looks cheap. And while there's nothing necessarily wrong with that, it's hard to compare that to something like the Pod Go, which has a full metal chassis and looks and feels like it's made for the stage and the road. The user interface is a point of contention for me also. When you are building a patch, there are seven different menus that you can choose from and each have their own functions. There's an edit effects function, a change effect order function, an add effects function, a delete effects function, a change amp or effect function, a create patch memory function, or a mode that really should be the only option, edit all. From edit all, you can control any of the previously mentioned functions through one editing mode. And it just feels redundant and unnecessary, and it just further convolutes the tone dialing process. Furthermore, there are several options in the menu that just feel like they belong somewhere else, whether it's the looper functions or tapping the tempo. There are several other similar effects units that have streamlined the whole menu navigation system to make it much more enjoyable to use, much like the previously mentioned Pod Go, which is probably the main competitor in this price range, and it just seems to me like Zoom has taken a much more convoluted and unorganized approach to the whole user experience. Now, in full disclosure here, you can connect it to your phone or your computer and use the Guitar Labs app to dial in tones, and I don't really know what that's like because I couldn't get it to work. I tried multiple times to connect the G6 to my Mac, and before you ask, yes, I turned it off and back on again, but to no avail. So I can't really comment on whether or not the app is good because I couldn't get it to work. The last thing that I'll mention here is though it's advertised that you can set up nine effects or seven with an amp and a cabinet, that has to do with the slots available for the effects. In my experience, the DSP will limit you before the effect slots do, particularly if you were using any more of the robust effects such as the Polytune. Zoom has included a handy way for you to tell how much DSP each effect uses as indicated by a percentage next to the effect. But if you aren't paying attention and including that information in your patch building decisions, you can max out the DSP really quick. So in conclusion, I find the Zoom G6 to be sort of an anomaly in the world of floorboard effects units and modelers. On the one hand, you have an excellent looking touchscreen, but it's enclosed in plastic that is made to look like carbon fiber. You have excellent sounding effects, but a messy user interface to get to those effects. You have some really sought after effects like the poly pitch, but it will eat up all of your DSP. See what's going on here? You have an ungodly amount of loop time and user memory, but you have to have an SD card with the appropriate storage capacity. It feels like it has a lot of promise, and when compared to the older G4, it is such a massive step up in the right direction and shows that they are still making competitive products. However, it would be great to see them streamline the user experience by making simpler, easier to access menus, and getting rid of all the unnecessary steps in creating a patch. I hope you guys have enjoyed this review. If you have, make sure that you hit the like button, and I will see you in the next video. Bye guys.